This is a Jack Kemp Foundation oral history project interview with Jim Mora, Jack Kemp's roommate at Occidental College and a, later a uh, head coach at the New Orleans Saints and the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, today is August 5th, 2011, and I'm Morton Kondracki. Thanks so much for doing this, Coach. Um, when you think about Jack Kemp, what immediately comes to your mind? I think about a, a guy that, that, that was totally dedicated and committed to being a professional football player. Uh, you know, when you're at Occidental College, it, you're not, not a lot of professional football players come out of Oxy. And, you know, Jack didn't even start as, as our freshman quarterback at a, at a small school like Oxy or as a sophomore, he wasn't the starting quarterback. He didn't start till his junior year, but he always had the, the belief and the commitment that he could play quarterback as a professional football player. And he worked to that end, and nobody could convince him otherwise. So I think about somebody that was dedicated, committed, uh, believed in himself, had a great work ethic, and uh, got it done. So how did you meet Jack Kemp? I like to tell people, see, when I, I went to university high school in Los Angeles, Jack went to Fairfax, and we were in the same league. So I like to tell people that the first time I ever met Jack is when I sacked him a couple times <laughs> when we played against each other in high school, but that really wasn't the case. But we did play against each other, so I knew of Jack. But the first time I met Jack was when we were freshmen at Occidental, and we were on the freshman football team, coached by Peyton Jordan, former... Uh, Olympic track coach for the USA team and uh, Jack was a quarterback, fullback, punter. I was a tight end type guy and uh, we, we first met there on the uh, football field. So how did you come to be roommates? Did you pick each other or did you just get thrown together? No, we didn't get thrown together. We picked each other. I, you know, I've, I've thought about this often, uh, how, how we all of a sudden started rooming together. I just, we just kind of started becoming good friends and uh, initially uh, he, as I recall, I, my, my first semester, I, I, I lived in the dorm, but I think Jack lived at home, as I recall. And uh, I, I remember, uh, you know, we being, he was a quarterback, I was a receiver, you know, that type of thing. We'd work out together. But uh, I know I'd go over to his house sometimes, and we'd lift weights together. Jack was an avid lift, weightlifter and all, and we just, we just got to be buddies. And after our freshman year, I think we both lived in the, in, as roommates in the same room in, in the ATO house, the fraternity house. On occasion, a couple of times during our career there, we, we got a, an apartment together, became roommates. So we were always, we were just really close friends, roommates, classmates, teammates, co-captains our mm -hmm. senior year, the whole deal. So what was the basis of your, of your friendship? Was it football or did it go beyond football? Well, we... we you know, we, other than football, I mean, we just liked each other. I mean, we were good friends off the field. It wasn't like we just got together and played together. I mean, we, were, we went out together, went to movies together, uh, had good times in the fraternity house together, although neither one of us were what you would call, you know, frat rats or something like that. Mm -hmm. But we did live in the house of some and were good friends there, and we just hit it off. That was the main thing. We just hit it off as good buddies. Why did he go to Occidental? That's a good question. I, I don't know why he went to Oxy. I don't know if I ever asked him. Neither one of us were great high school football players. I mean, we both made like the all-league team and things like that. But I don't think either one, I didn't have a chance to go to a USC or a UCLA, local universities, and I don't think Jack did either. But uh, so I don't know what steered him to Oxy. I, I, I can't tell you that. Mm -hmm. uh, some, I mean, I've seen it said that he, uh, that, that, the, that the coach ran a, quote, pro football style program. Is that the case? No, uh -huh. that's not the case. At Oxy? Yeah. No, that's not the case. I, uh, we, ours was not what you would call a program that would develop you for the NFL or for professional football as a quarterback. Not in any way. That was all Jack's doing. He, he, he made himself a professional football player. It wasn't the program at Occidental College. I'm not knocking Oxy's football program, but we never won a championship, conference championship. We had another player on our team who was a good friend of ours that was one of our roommates, Ron Botchin, who uh, played a couple years in the American Football League, like, like Jack did, and then became a, a longtime NFL official. But, uh, so we had you know, some pretty good football players in the team, but we never, never won a championship. We were a pretty good team, but nothing special. So it's kind of amazing that Jack 
got to be a professional football player. I, I think it's really amazing that he became, not just became a professional football player, but became a, an outstanding professional football player. That was all Jack's doing, all his tremendous work ethic, his commitment, his dedication, his belief that he could be one. He made himself into something special. Uh, just going back to going back to high school, uh, playing against him, what was that like? I mean, how 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 good was he as a passer and so on? <laughs> you know, I hate to keep saying he wasn't like an all city quarterback or an all. You know, he wasn't. He was he was a good player. It, like even as a freshman on a on a on a on a team like we had at Oxy, which was a good freshman team, but it, we weren't loaded with great players by any sense. Just guys, you know. And he, he wasn't even our starting quarterback, but he played. I mean, he played some. He played some fullback. He played a lot of different, you know, some different positions. But he wasn't anybody at that point where you would say, man, this guy's got something special. He's going to be something special. He's got a chance to play in the, in the pros. You didn't think that at that point. He made himself a, a great player. Uh, and how did he make himself a great player? With a, with a, with a belief that he could do it, a, a want to be one, play at the professional level, and, and, a, and a great work ethic. I mean, he, back in those days, lift, lifting weights was not a, a big thing like it is now with, with athletes. And I mean, all different types of sports guys, I mean, track, swimming, golf, whatever, they all lift weights to get, you know, to become better. Back then, people thought maybe if you lifted weights, it made you muscle bound or something like that. Jack was a committed weightlifter. And here's a guy, he's a quarterback. I mean, quarterbacks nowadays don't, don't like the lift. You know, you got your linemen and people like that doing it. But Jack, he pumped that iron and, uh, and, and always wanted to work out and throw the ball and, and get better and do whatever it took to become a better player and uh, just was dedicated to that goal. And I think that's what made him what he, what he was. Did he use off seasons to keep practicing and stuff? Well, he, he, you know, he participated in track at, at Occidental. He, he threw the javelin. So he was always, you know, doing something athletically, but he also spent a lot of time working out. I mean, he grabbed me and said, hey, let's go throw the ball around and get ready during the summer and things like that. So he, he kept himself in shape, but, but not, you know, we didn't have spring practice. It was a small school. We didn't have spring practice or do anything other than during the season. So whatever he did, he did on his own. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your outstanding memories of uh, Oxy football and, and Jack's play in it? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, hey, well, you know, when you when you ask that question, it's it's like, you you know, I was always trying to do the best I could do, and 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 I know, you know I was a I was a receiver. Jack was a quarterback, so we teamed up a lot, not only during the season, but some during the off season, during the summer, getting ready, you know. Throw, he throw the ball to me, things like that. Um, Jack, like I say, Jack. Well, I mean, were there any were there any <sighs> celebrated games that you you know no. he, th he threw you a ninety yard pass or something no. like that? No, there wasn't. I mean, well, you were were you his favorite receiver? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was a hard passer. Oh man, you mean like threw the ball hard? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, 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 I, I liked it. If, if you didn't catch it, in other words, if you didn't catch it out, I mean, if it hit you and if it went into your body, I mean, I'd, I'd come away from a workout with Jack with kind of a sore sternum because he, he threw the ball so hard. He was very strong and he worked at getting stronger. He worked at building himself up. Yeah, he threw the, a hard pass. I mean, it was a hard pass. Well, not hard to catch, but it wasn't a soft pass or a floppy pass. I mean, he, he got behind it and ripped it in there. Like I say, I'd come away with a sore sternum occasionally. If I if I let it hit me in the chest, so he became a little college All American, didn't he? I mean, well, I've read you know, that. he he might have been an honorable mention little All American, and he was certainly uh, had some impressive passing statistics his senior year. But he, I'm not sure he was ever. I, I don't think he was ever like a first team or second team little All American. I, I Did you have winning think, seasons? Pardon? Did you have winning seasons? Yeah, but not not where we won eight or nine games. We didn't play that many games at Occidental back then, but we never, you know, we, we always had winning seasons. We were competitive. We were pretty good, but we, I don't think we ever won a conference championship. In fact, I know we didn't. 
Now, somebody said that uh, that as a quarterback, he it was like Sandlot football that he would start dr- diagramming plays on the on the on the ground in the huddle before a, a play. Is that true or not true? No, he didn't diagram. He he might have made things up. In fact, he did. I mean, he was the kind of guy who said, "Well, you go here, you go here, and I'll get you the ball." We didn't have a have we didn't have what you call a complicated offense. But he wouldn't get down on the ground and draw it up on the ground. I never saw him do that in a game. But he, he would kind of ad lib a little bit as far as the play was concerned and figure it out what he thought would be the best way to move the ball down the field. Those were the days when quarterbacks did all the play calling. Right. Jack Plays. did all the play calling. Right. And what kind of a play caller was he? Oh, he was a good play caller. He was a student of the game, studied the game. Uh, you know, winning was important to him. He wanted to. He wanted to be successful. He was a good play caller. Uh, when you say studied the game, did he? How did he study the game? Well, back then at a small school, we didn't. We would film the games, but but I but I don't. You know, he wouldn't come in during the week and look at films. We didn't have films of the opponents like they do nowadays and and all that. But the best he could under the circumstances, he was a was a good student of the game. Um, what kind of a leader was he? He was a great leader. I think this was one of his, uh, one of his assets, uh, um, took charge, uh, guys looked up to him. Uh, he, he, he wasn't like a, a screamer and a yeller by any sense, but he, he, he would, he, he was an emotional guy. Uh, he, he wouldn't be afraid to tell you, you know, what he thought you ought to be doing or what you shouldn't be doing because winning was so important to him and he wanted everybody to be doing the right thing. But he was a vocal leader, good leader, positive leader. Yeah, I think, I think his leadership qualities were uh, one of his strongest areas. Well, Jack, Jack, you know, Jack believed, always thought that he, he should, when, even when he wasn't starting, say as a sophomore or a freshman, he didn't like this and he, he didn't believe that he shouldn't. He, he thought that he was the best, and he should have been. And sometimes, I mean, he he would show that. You know what I mean? Because he that's, had a temper. That's why. Yeah, he had a little bit of a temper, and, and he'd get upset uh, if if he didn't feel like he he was the best. You know, getting due process, being the best guy and uh, or the starter, and he he would let people know this. Uh, and you you could tell that he you know he wasn't just going to let it be that he was. Did bothered he, by this and well, uh, not, not that he would be disrespectful or anything to the coach but amongst us his teammates I mean it was like you know hey I'm, I'm, I'm the best guy I should be out there I don't like the fact that I'm not the starter and things like that I mean he it would bother him he was an emotional competitive guy always was and if uh, somebody wasn't performing up to snuff how, how did he you know I, I don't remember that specifically but I would just Generally speaking, I would think that he would be upset with that person, would let that person know that that uh, he wasn't happy with what they were doing. I mean, that's the kind of guy he was. I mean, he was a demonstrative, outgoing, vocal person that would let you know if if, if he didn't think you were doing what it took to be successful and to be winning a winner. How did he get along with the coach and the coach the other the other coaches? He got along fine with the coaches. You know, we didn't have a big staff back then with a small school and all. Things were a lot different back then. But he, yeah, he got along fine. But he, he was a, a vocal. Uh, I mean, he he'd tell you what he what he thought, and he wasn't afraid to to question the coach or to make suggestions or or to or to say, hey, that I don't think that's the right way to do it. I think we ought to do it this way. I mean, he, he was that way. I mean, do you remember any specific instances? No, I don't that? remember any spe- specific instances. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I could tell you something off camera. I don't know if this would... We, we didn't think our, our, our coach was a good coach. And I don't know if this should... And, and after the, our senior year, Jack and I went to the... Uh, I don't know if it was the president of the college or the dean of the faculty, I don't remember. And we expressed our feeling that we didn't think our head coach was a good coach. And I think he had either, they, he'd been there forever and a great person, great guy. But he just, we didn't think doing what he should be doing for us to be the best we could be. This was after we were finished. 
And Jack and I went to the uh, higher ups at the at the school to tell him this. And you know, this was how Jack was, and this is kind of how I was too. And uh, I, I either he was let go as the head coach. He was still on the faculty there for a long time, but he wasn't the head he wasn't the head football coach anymore after our senior year. What did Jack think was wrong with his coaching? He, I don't think, I, 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 neither one of us just didn't feel like, like, like he put the time and effort into it to, to be successful that, that, he, that he should have. I mean, that was the main thing, or had the knowledge or the, or the, the work ethic to, to, to do what it took to be successful. Um, how did Jack react uh, if he got sacked? <laughs> Jack didn't react very well to anything if it, if it was an bad to him or negative. I mean, like I said, he'd get upset. He'd, he'd be emotional. He'd, you know, he'd, he'd show it. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, okay, I got sacked, big deal. No, no, he was a, a guy, you know, he might throw the ball down or something like that or get mad or block that guy or something like that, you know what I mean? That's how he was. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how he was. That's Jack Kemp. And did he... Um, ins- but, but I'm saying, I don't want to... It's not, a, not in a negative way, you know what I mean? Just... Yeah. Did he expressed ins- his emotions. Did he did he inspire his teammates? Oh yeah, very much so. Did I he? mean, you didn't want to come under his. I don't want to say wrath necessarily, but I mean, he let you know if he wasn't happy if, how things were going. I mean, he he it was really important for him to to win, and he worked so hard at himself being good. He wanted everybody else to be the same way, and I think this was good. Um, how often did he get injured? Well, you know, I, I remember him getting hurt. He got hurt one, and it wasn't his senior year. I don't know if it was his sophomore year or junior, and he missed, I think he missed some games. But, but he, he, he didn't get hurt that much. And if, and if he did get a little banged up or something, he'd, he'd keep playing. I mean, if he possibly could, I know that. Tough guy. I know at the pro level he, he did. Concussions? I don't remember a concussion in college. Mm-hmm. Uh, did his folks and, and his brothers always come to the games? Yes, they- as I recall, his mom and dad brothers were there very supportive as i recall yep how did you uh how did you what did you think about his family life based on what you saw well you know i and i and i would go to his house and and, and knew his mom and dad uh and, and i, I would out what, what i would call be a basically a, a maybe i don't know if an upper class middle class upper middle class but nice area there in, in la and uh, Christian Science home, you know, that he grew up in, but he certainly didn't practice the, that phase of religion. I don't. I didn't get the feeling that he was an over religious, a Christian Scientist type person, you know. Uh, what made you think that he well, wasn't overly Christian Scientist? Well, well, <laughs> I don't know. He just didn't seem like a real pious type guy. He wasn't. I mean, not that he didn't seem like it. He wasn't. I mean. It's hard to say. I don't know. I mean, Were his? Uh, could you? You knew that he was Christian Scientist. Right. How? Because I, he told me, and his mom and dad were, and he was raised in that environment. I'd go to his house, and they had the Christian Science monitor there. You know what I mean? And I just knew he was. He told me he was. But I don't think he was a practicing Christian Scientist, mm-hmm. where where they didn't what allow medical attention or whatever it was. No, I don't think that was the case with Jack. As I recall, yeah, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to drink and smoke and stuff like that. Well, he didn't he drink didn't. or smoke. Yeah, Jack did not drink or smoke. I, I can't recall ever seeing Jack drink a beer. Now, he might have at a fraternity party or something like that, but I I can't ever remember him with a glass of can of beer in his hand ever. Was we he? We were pretty straight. Was he against players drinking? Not that I recall him being against players drinking. No. Um, Jack liked to have his fun. I mean, you know, I mean, he wasn't a stay-at-home, sit-around guy. We'd go out and have some fun, but nothing well, when very you went extravagant. Out had, when you well, went, I know you're you going to movies. <laughs> <laughs> We'd go to fraternity parties, movies. Uh, you know, we, I could tell you, as I, you know, practical jokes. We practical jokes, things like that. I mean, we did he pull any? Yeah, Jack wasn't adverse to, 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 to doing stuff like that. Do you remember any? Well, I, I mean, how... Get the fullest story we can possibly get. The fullest story? Yeah. We used to, we used to, like, 
if a friend of ours, one of our other class uh, roommates or something, had a date, we we might get in like uh, one of our roommates had a had a convertible, and he had like a a cover from the end of the front seat that covered the back. What they call it a uh, a, a canvas thing that went over the back seat that covered the back seat. And we we he'd go out on a date and and Jack and I might be in the in the back seat. You know what I mean? Under the cover. Under the cover, yeah. <laughs> While this guy was on his date, so we and they and they he and the girl didn't know we were back there. So we'd be we'd be back there. You know he might go somewhere and neck with her or something like that. But we might be in the back seat or he'd be in you know. Uh, I know a couple of times we 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 uh, were in a uh, kind of a little house type apartment that we were, that we were in together in school, and um, it was near the Forest Lawn Mortuary, a cemetery, and we we hooked up some deal and I forget exactly the details and this was I don't know if it was Jack's idea but we did it, and we would invite another friend over and we we had it hooked up where there would be some noise outside you know what i mean some eerie type of thing and this guy would be sitting there what's that you know i don't know man we've got these creatures coming around here or people you know and stuff and i mean things like that nothing nothing bad but i i wonder if he somebody rode a bike through the library one time i don't know if it was jack or not it might have been i don't know <laughs> I mean, he'd, you know, he, he'd do crazy stuff like that. Nothing bad, but, you know, he, he wasn't afraid. Did, did he ever get in trouble for anything? <sighs> Not that I recall. Uh, there's one football incident that I've seen recorded, and that is Whittier is your main rival? Well, the, the main rival, like the SC UCLA, the main rival was Occidental Pomona, okay? Uh -huh. But Whittier always had maybe the best team in the, in the league, so that was the team we wanted to beat. And George Allen was the coach. George Allen was the coach at Whittier when we were at Oxy. So yeah. is there this incident where George Allen is screaming at you and Jack Kemp from the sidelines? He might have been. You don't remember that? No. Okay. Uh, so was Jack Kemp, would you say, mature for his age or immature or... Ordinary? Ordinary. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of a student was he? he? He wasn't a great student. We were both physical education majors, and, and back in those days, Occidental had one of the better physical education programs around. They put a lot of uh, physical education teachers into the, the high schools as physical education teachers and coaches. We had a department head by the name of Carl Treve. He was an old German guy, not old, but he was a German guy, very disciplined, and had a great, great reputation for that department. And we were both majors. And uh, he was, a, I would say, not a great student. Uh, it surprised me a little. Well, he, even in his other classes, he was, I would say, an average student. I mean, I had a lot of classes with him. And he was an average student, but I, but I will tell you this, and I've told people this. Uh, he, outside of the classroom, he had. Like like okay, back in those days, you know, Sports Illustrated magazine. Now they didn't have Sports Illustrated, but they had a magazine called Sport Magazine. I subscribed to Sport Magazine. Jack subscribed to U.S. News and World Report. So I knew right then that our careers would probably take a little different path. You know what I mean? And, and he had an interest in, in, in what was going on outside of sports, you know, politically, uh, economically. I mean, it was there. Not that he was a, uh, did it all the time or that it was obvious, but, but it was there that, that, that he, he had more of an interest in what was going on outside of football or class or whatever than maybe some, some of his close friends did. So what, what other courses did he take besides PE? That well, we took, we, you know, with physical education, there were certain courses you had to take at Occidental because it's a liberal arts school. Your first two years, you had a lot of required courses, uh, US, uh, history of civilization, things like that. We had to take a lot of 
we took biology and, 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 and anatomy and things like that as a physical education major. You had to take a language, you had to take religion course back then. And we basically, you know, pretty much took the same curriculum, he and I. So we were in a lot of classes together. Was he a great student? No. Was he a good student? Yeah. Did he work at it? Yeah. Was he a bad student? No, he wasn't a bad student, but he wasn't like, I mean, he, he, at, back in those days, I, I wouldn't have ge predicted that he would have been a, did what he did politically in his career. N not because of the student, just because of his interests and what he, what he, you know, just how he was being around him. I mean, what would you have predicted? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't think I would have predicted him as a physical education teacher at the high school level. Certainly a lot more than that. Not that that was bad, but, uh, he, he I don't, he, he did you did he you wasn't did just you an think... ordinary guy I mean there was something special about Jack you know what I mean he wasn't just like a a guy there, there was always maybe it was leadership qualities or whatever but he was always somebody that you knew that he was going to be successful at whatever he did and it was going to be maybe beyond the ordinary I always had that feeling about Jack and uh, did you think he could make it in the pros That's a good question because knowing his work ethic and commitment, I, I wouldn't say I didn't think he could make it, but I thought it would be a huge long shot. Now, I think he was lucky that the American Football League came along when it did, okay, because he, he bounced around for three years. You know, even, Now, the fact that he was drafted out of Occidental College, I think, was something special because not many players get drafted out of Occidental College or schools on that level, not just Oxy, but other schools. But here's a guy that gets drafted, but he kind of bounced around for three years in the NFL, the Canadian League, I know, for a little bit. But in 1960, the American Football League started. Now it's a new league, and, and he had an opportunity now to get, in, go, get to a point where he could be a full-time player and all, and then from then on his career took off. So I think he was fortunate from that standpoint that the AFL started when it did early in his career. But when you were in college, uh, he was convinced that he was going to be a, a pro player. You had, your, you had well, your doubts? I don't know if I had my doubts, but I, but, I, but I knew that it would be hard for him. I thought it would be hard for him, yeah, because he, he wasn't like... I mean, he was a good player in college, a real good player. I don't know, but as I recall, it wasn't like, wow, you know what I mean? It wasn't like that, but it was a, he was a good player, but it was just that, that dedication he had that I think was impressive to me that, hey, if he got an opportunity, maybe he could do it. That's, that's what I thought, and he got the opportunity. But he didn't, didn't go into the NFL and set the world on fire for three years. He didn't. But, right. Um, was he did was he ever interested in any other particular courses besides his phys ed major? I mean, did uh, I'm thinking of political science or something like that? Did I don't I don't recall that he was. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know I know as a in his political career that it, he was involved. You know, he got into the economics and things like that. And and I and I want to say that maybe when we were in college he he had an interest in that area i, I kind of have a feeling that he did but i don't remember specifically okay mm -hmm. maybe now, it's I, because of what he did it later on you know that makes me think that way but i i still kind of think that he did i mean like i said he subscribed he read us news and world report i read sport magazine and i wasn't a dummy you know what i mean but so there was an interest in something that was going on in the world yeah did he talk about that stuff a little bit yeah yeah, I mean, he, he was he was a little a little more special than some of the other guys I hung around with. You know that were in, that we were, there was four of us that were kind of roommates for the four years and classmates and teammates. And Jack's interests were a little bit out of the ordinary from a standpoint of what we were interested in. From, who were who were your other two roommates? Ron Botchin was one. I don't know if you know that name, mm -hmm. and Nick Rodionoff were, were two. Rodionoff? Rodionoff, R-O-D-I-O-N-O-F-F. -F. Mm -hmm. He became a high school coach, teacher. Ron did too, and then Ron went into, he, he was the one that played a couple of years in the AFL, and then he was a, a coach. 
At a junior college level, yeah, in a, an official, NFL official. Now, I've read that uh, that uh, Jack was interested in classical music and ballet oh, and boy. sculpture and stuff like that. I, I don't remember that. Okay. I, yeah. I don't remember that. Now, other people say that, and, and maybe it just kind of went over my head that he was, but he had, like I say, interests beyond sports and that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? He did. Um, did he participate in any particular other activities besides football and the, and the fraternity? I mean, Track. Yeah. No, no campus politics or anything like that? Not Didn't that run I for recall. Office? Not that I recall. No. Um, was he a, a big man on campus? Yeah, Jack was a was a big. You'd call him a big man on campus because he was the quarterback of the football team. You know, good looking guy. You know, uh, outgoing guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, people knew who Jack Kemp was, and it's a small school. You know, it's, it's, I don't know, eighteen hundred people, so it wasn't hard to be a big man. But he, yeah, he was well thought of, popular guy. You know, good looking guy, football player, the whole deal. Yeah. But he was never interested in being a class officer or anything like that. No, he was not into leadership activities or roles other than in sports that I recall. No. Did you ever a ask him why? I no. Mean, no, and nobody asked him to run for anything ever. I don't. Not that I recall. What What was the importance of Peyton Jordan to Jack Kemp? Well, I don't know what the importance to, was prior to Jack going to Oxy, but I know that once we we got to Oxy, Peyton was our fr freshman football coach, one of the best. One of the more outstanding men that I've ever been around, um, a coach, a uh, person, uh, a guy that motivated you, that you looked up to, leader. As I said, he was the, also the head track coach, so Jack participated on his track team as a javelin thrower. Jack and, and Peyton became close. I think Jack looked to Peyton for advice, counsel, leadership, whatever. Uh, Peyton eventually left Oxy and went to Stanford as the head track coach and became the USA head track coach for one of the Olympic teams. I forget exactly what year it was, but a wonderful guy. In fact, a few years ago, Jack was in, was in LA. I was living in the desert where I live now. And, uh, and, and, and Peyton was, uh, lived in, Peyton Jordan lived in Santa Barbara. And J Jack came up, Jack stayed in contact with Peyton Jordan through the years, and, and Peyton Jordan was the kind of guy that would stay in touch with us, write you, or like, write you a nice note or a nice letter if you did something good or he read about you in the paper or whatever. And, and Jack got the idea for Jack and I and Ron Botchin to drive up to Santa Barbara and visit Peyton and his wife, and Peyton had been diagnosed with cancer, which he eventually succumbed to a few years ago. But I know the three of us drove uh, up to Santa Barbara and spent a day with Peyton and his wife, Peyton Jordan and his wife. And uh, I know they had a very close relationship, Jack. And, and I think a lot of it was Jack's, well, Peyton was good about keeping in touch with you, but I think Jack did a good job of keeping in touch with Peyton Jordan too. Outstanding individual, one of the all time greats in my opinion. Do you think that he recruited Jack to Occidental? I don't know that. I don't know the answer. If, I don't know if he did or not. But I know that, again, if Jack would have wanted to play for Peyton. They'd only been as a freshman. Hmm. And I don't think Jack was our starting quarterback as a freshman. So I don't know. How did Jack not become your, this is a freshman team, right? Yeah, we had about 20 guys on the team. Huh. And Jack didn't start as a freshman? Not, the, not as quarterback. Our starting quarterback, I recall, I remember was a guy by the name of Chauncey Pa, who was a, from Hawaii. But Jack played. I mean, he, I think he, he played some fullback. He punted. He did things like that. He might have played some quarterback. As did I you recall. did you play sixty minutes? Yeah, defense back too. Back in those days, yeah, yeah. He probably, yeah. As I recall, Jack might have played defense too. As I, I was too worried about myself to. <laughs> <laughs> um, he had a he had an MG. Oh man, did I love that MG? <laughs> he had a little MG. I think it was red. And I've, ever since those days, I've always wanted an MG because I loved that MG. And, and we used to go down to Hollywood and drive down the main drag, whether it was Sunset Boulevard or Hollywood, I forget. 
We'd go down there like on a Friday or Saturday night, and maybe three of us would hop in that MG if we could fit. And we'd drive down the top down and everything, and Sunset Boulevard or Hollywood Boulevard. But I, I yeah, he had to eat, fly around that MG. I loved that MG. Uh, uh, how could he afford it? Don't ask me. I don't think his, his parents were, did okay. I mean, he lived in a nice house, and I think his dad, I'm not sure exactly what he did, he, but uh, I mean, I was over there a lot, and uh, I don't know. I, I, I think he were, I, I, I don't remember exactly what he did during the summer and things like that, but I don't know. He did. Did he speed? Did he do speaking? Again? Did he speed? Oh, speed. Speed in the car. He might have, knowing Jack. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if, if he did. And I don't recall exactly, but Jack was the guy that would do things to the edge. Uh, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if he did. Like, you know, I mean, Jack was, you know what I mean? I don't know if other people have told you this or not, but yeah, I mean, he was that way. I mean, he, aggressive guy. <laughs> uh, but not violent. Not dangerously or something like yeah. that? Oh, violent as a person? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. No. Not, not the way I remember him. Assertive. Very assertive. That's good. Good. Assertive. Very much assertive. But impatient? Very much assertive. But impatient? Impatient would be a good, good term for Jack. Yes. Any other adjectives that you could you put on him? <sighs> well, I've already told you some, you know, I mean... I don't know. Maybe give me, give me, give me some. Definitely assertive and impatient. Yeah, I mean, you brought these up. How, yeah. how, definitely. How close could you get to him? I mean, was he somebody who confided in people? And yeah, hmm. I, I thought that Jack and I were very close. Yeah, he, I could confide in him, and he could confide in me. Even when we got together through the years, and the last time we were together other than when Ron and I went back to see him when he was ill, right before he passed away, um, we had our 50-year reunion, college reunion at Oxy, and we spent quite a bit of time, you know, over a period of a couple of days, we stayed at, Connie and I stayed at the same hotel as he and Joanne over in Pasadena, and we, I know, I remember we got in my room and the girls were doing something, and we sat there and told little war stories for two or three hours, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I never felt like I couldn't get as close as I wanted to to Jack, or he, I'm sure he felt the same way about me. We were, we were close friends mm -hmm. and stayed that way through the years. How, um, how I remember he called me. He, call, he called me, and I remember him calling me like it was in January or February of, of, of you know, the year he died in May, I know. I think it was May. But he called me. He said, hey, Jim, I got bad news. I said, what's the bad news? He said, I got cancer, and it's terminal. And he said, I don't know where, you know, it's going to be months, a year, or whatever, but, and here's what it is. I remember him calling me and telling me that. And he says, would you tell Ron and Nick and some of these guys that what's going on? Mm -hmm. Did, uh, did, how often did you talk to him after you graduated? Well, you know, not, not a lot, but we, I'd run it, we'd, I'd run in, you know, he always had these Super Bowl parties, and if I went to a Super Bowl when I was coaching in the NFL, not playing in it, but coaching in it, but go down there, you know, for the, the game and a few days beforehand, we'd, we'd go to the parties. Uh, sometimes Oxy might have some kind of a, a alumni deal or something that, that I would uh, see him at. Uh, we'd get together. We talked quite a bit on the phone. I, I know he'd... He had that distinctive voice, and, and he started calling me Coach. And, and, and I'd pick up the phone, and he'd go, Coach, Jack Kemp here. As if I didn't know it was Jack Kemp, you know, by his voice. Jack Kemp. Hi, Jack, how you doing, you know? <laughs> but anyway, we, we'd talk. We'd stay in touch. He helped my son. I got a, I got a, I got a, my middle son's an architect, Michael. And he lives up in Seattle. He and his partner have their own architectural business. He went to University of Washington, got his master's there and everything in architecture. Uh, you know who Tim Blixeth is? Tim Blixeth was a good friend of Jack's. He's a very wealthy um, person that um, owned um, Yellowstone 
uh, Jack. It's a big ski area up in Montana. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but he and Jack were close friends. In fact, he gave Jack a lot up there or something. But here's the kind of guy Jack was. My son Michael and Tim Blixeth bought a, this was just a few years ago, bought a, uh, a home on Lake Washington in Seattle. You fam you're familiar with that, okay. And he was looking for an architect to do a remodel on his home. And somehow my son Michael found out that, that Tim was looking for an architect, okay? So, and, and, and he knew that, my son knew that Tim knew Jack. So, so Mike, my son Mike called me and said, hey dad, he says, uh, maybe you could call Jack and put it, you know, maybe he could put in a good word for me. I called Jack on the phone. I said, hey Jack, I told him what was going on. He, oh, yeah, he said, I'll call Tim. He called Tim. Tim hired my son to do the job. Now, they haven't done it yet because Tim keeps changing his mind and stuff, but they're going to do it. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, you know, within a matter of days, Blixeth was talking to my son and decided to hire him to, to do the job. I mean, that's, that's just how Jack was. Hmm. Blixeth's a multimillionaire guy. He's got, yeah. He was anyway. a political backer of Jack's or? Might have been. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, now look, you are probably the closest person to witness the courtship of Jack Kemp and Joanne Main. So tell me about how that unfolded. Uh, well, jo Joanne was, was one of the better looking. Oxy wasn't known for its beautiful co-eds. Still isn't probably. A lot of smart ones, but, but Joanne was an attractive gal. Jack certainly was one that wasn't going to go out with anybody that wasn't good looking, attractive. I mean, that's how he was, you know. He wasn't going to settle for anything less than something pretty darn good, which Joanne was. She was in a sorority there. Uh, Jack had, wasn't a big ladies guy by any sense, but he, he liked to go out. In fact, in fact, I was going with a girl from my high school, and Jack and I double dated with one of her friends from, from my high school, and they were still in high school. He was an aggressive, I mean, hard to get along with sometimes, Jack was. I, I think about some of these things as you ask me these questions. But uh, like you, assertive, that's a great impatient. Those are great terms for Jack Kemp, trust me, in a why positive was he, way. Why, in what way was he hard to get it's along just, with? It's just, he was particular, he was... Uh, if he wanted something and he couldn't get it, it would upset him. He was aggressive. I mean, all these things. It, it, he just did he slam things around? I don't remember him doing that. But he it, okay. Say if he saw a girl that he wanted a good day. I mean, he's going to go after her. I mean, he's not going to. He's not going to be. He's not going to sit back and wait for her to come to him. He's going to. He's going to. Let's go, man. I'm going to. I'm going to take her out or I'm going to get a date with her. Not a big ladies guy by any sense. None of us were. But I guess he just saw something in Joanne that uh, he liked and, you know, I'm going to go after her. I'm going to go, I'm going to go take her out. And he started dating her. She was like a year behind us. And uh, that's how it happened. What year did they start dating? Boy, it wasn't, it wasn't, well... A good question. I, I don't know if it, might, it wasn't until his senior year that he started dating Joanne. I know it wasn't before uh, it, it wasn't before his junior year, and it might have been his senior year that they started going out. And uh, just had hit he it off. had he had any serious relationships before that? No, not that I recall. He did not. No. Now supposedly Nothing serious. Yeah. Now, supposedly she dated a bunch of other athletes. Okay, before, I don't know before. that. Uh -huh. I don't know that. I don't recall that. So do you know how they met? Well, I don't know if it was any the particular incident where they first met. I, I'm assuming that Jack just saw her on campus or maybe it was at a party or function or something and <clears throat> she was an attractive, <clears throat> excuse me, she was an attractive gal and a sharp gal. He says, hey, this is somebody I would like to meet and date. 
Uh, that's what I would assume happened, as I recall. I don't remember any particular incident where they met or hooked up or something like that. Just started taking her out. So he must have reported to you on how it was going. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't remember You were that. his roommate. <laughs> I know. Uh, I don't remember any discussion about Joanne. I really don't. So at what point is it obvious that they're going to get married? I don't think that happened until after we got out of school. And Jack, I went in the Marine Corps, stationed back at Quantico in North Carolina, and Jack was, you know, involved with his professional football and all, and uh, all of a sudden I found out they were going to get married. He was in my wedding as an usher. I wasn't in his wedding because we couldn't, I was in the service and all that, and we couldn't do that, but I know he was, he was in my wedding. He was one of the ushers, but I... I, I wasn't able to go to his wedding because of my commitment to the Marines. So they went, they went together f steady his senior year? I think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, this I, is... I don't remember exactly. This is the era, you know, when fraternity guys gave their girlfriends pins and stuff. Like their, you know, I can't see Jack doing something like that, giving her his pin. I don't even know if he had a pin. He wasn't much of a frat boy. He wasn't a guy frat guy. No, he was not. Although we lived there on occasion, he was not a frat guy, mm -hmm. not in any way. Do you remember him ever having any doubts about his connection to Joanne that, you know, or think that this is going too far too fast or something like that? I do not recall that. So was he? I don't know if it went too far too fast, you know. Did it go too slow? Too I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, so, do you remember who pursued who? I, I knowing Jack, I'm sure Jack pursued her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I don't. I wouldn't. Just knowing Joanne, I wouldn't think Joanne went after Jack. Although I'm sure, so obviously, Jack appealed to her. But knowing Jack, I would think that he was the aggressor. Right. Anything else that you remember about that? No courtship or no. Um. So we've discussed character traits. Uh, an, another one uh, is focused. Uh, you, Jack is famously regarded as being totally focused on whatever he wanted to accomplish. Definitely. Uh, you know, and again, my recollection of Jack when you, when you talk about focus would be his uh, athletic career, his football career, the focus of being the best he could be and the focus of eventually playing at the professional level. He just always believed that, that he could do that. Even though he was a quarterback from Occidental in an average football program, small school, uh, I, I, I'm going to focus on being, and doing what it takes to become one. Did he model himself on any particular football hero? That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. Do you, uh, what kind of changes could you see over the years in Jack? The change I saw in Jack was he became more of what I would call a, a politician. Jack, now this might be a little bit negative, okay, but I'm going to say it anyway became more image conscious than what I knew him in college. Um, sometimes Jack, say if Jose and I are Jack talking like you and I standing there, oh yeah, you know, and he, I never got, sometimes I get, you know, say we were at a function or something, I, I get the impression that Jack wasn't just focused in on me. I mean, if he saw somebody and he might be talk, talking to me, but he's looking over here, but uh, he was concerned more about his, his image, you know, and to me, talked more like a politician might talk, not just buddy to buddy or friend to friend. You know what I mean? I don't know if I'm making a point here, but, and it, it bothered me a little bit, but I'm thinking, oh, that's Jack, no big deal. And, and Ron, our friend Ron Botchin, I mean, he felt the same way that he, 
you know, it wasn't like we were back in college and shooting the bull with each other. Jack was worried about other things, you know. It was he, was he? And, and, and I don't want that to be too negative. I don't know if I'm making a good point here, what I'm talking about, but we always said, yeah, now he's a, now he's a politician, you know. So did he become more distant? No. More careful? Uh, how? No. Yeah. No. Not more distant or more care careful. No, those are, no. I would say no. Just worldly, would that be a good word? Um, I don't know. Just, and, and, and that maybe that just came with the, with the job, with the territory. I'm sure that's what I thought. Yeah, hey, that's, that's how he is now. But he was always, you know, fun to be around and good. And, you know, I mean, it wasn't like he, he was not pleasant to be with or I didn't enjoy being with him. We just, I just felt like he, he had a lot going on in his life, and it was important for, you know, important for him to have a good image and all that kind of stuff. And uh, people, how he felt about people, I, I never felt like when sometimes when we were t together that he was just locked in to talk. I mean, he had other things on his mind. You know what I mean? Other people that, that he was wanted to talk to, or if we were at a function with people around. He was a politician. This is like at the Super Bowl gatherings. You're yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. But he but he was friendly and and you know we were friends and he was hospitable and caring and all these kind of things. But he was going to talk to everybody, which is okay. Yeah, it didn't bother me. One one other question about uh, how conscious was he of his personal appearance, physical appearance. Very. Oh, okay. Very vain. Jack was very vain. Again, and in and, and, and a way where I could kid him about it. And this is, I think, one of the reasons, you know, his hair, he always wanted it, you know, how he had a nice hairdo anyway, but he always, you know, that was important to him. But I think this is one of the reasons he lifted weights, to make himself look good. He, uh, He'd pass, we'd be walking down the street, and if he passed a window in a store, he's going to check himself out. I mean, this was noticeable, okay? One time during spring break, the, when you were living around in Southern California, during spring break, you'd either go to Balboa, or you know what, you're familiar down there in Newport Beach, or you go to Palm Springs. In fact, one year we, we, we did both. We hopped in his car, I forget whose car it was, one of the MG, there was three or four of us, and we... We went to Palm Springs for a couple of days, and then we went to, to Balboa. But we went to Palm Springs, and we were staying at a motel where some of the girls that we knew were also staying there. And it was in the late afternoon, evening, and we were gonna, the girls were out at the pool. And we were going to, we just got there, and we were going to put our bathing suits on and go out. Well, Jack hops down on the floor and does some push-ups because he wanted to pump himself up, <laughs> seriously, and look good. For the girls, you know what he was? He's down there doing the push-ups and stuff like that. You know, now he's all, now we go out to the pool. And he's a vain guy. <laughs> That's Did, one thing I re remember about Jack Kemp. I mean, it was important for him to, yeah, his appearance was important to him. Uh, did he st <laughs> stay vain his whole, whole, whole life? I think so. I wasn't around him enough, you know, his whole life to know that, but I think that was always important to him. Were you surprised that he, he had a crew cut? for much of his football career, and then he becomes a politician, and all of a sudden he grows his hair long. Do, do, do. Uh, maybe that's, that's how he changed. He became a politician. Not many politicians with crew cuts. Right. <laughs> um, so did you talk to him during these days? Let's walk through his career a little bit. Um, in, the, in those days when he was getting cut from team after team after team, did you talk to him? A little bit. And how, how did he... Take that. I, I don't. I don't. Rem, I don't remember exactly exactly how he, how he took it. Whether it bothered him, I'm sure it bothered him. I, I really can't answer that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so he he gets to the, he gets to the Chargers and he's working for Sid Gilman. How how did he get along with Gilman? I think he got along great with Sid Gilman, as far as I know, because Sid was a true professional 
and I think and, and, and a knowledgeable guy, offensive guy, uh, innovator, passing game, and, and of course Jack being a quarterback and the, and the leader of their team. Uh, I think I think I, I knew Sid a little bit. Sid was a, a again an assertive type guy, emotional guy. Jack's the same way. I think I think they might have clashed some. Not that I know for sure. But, but I think in a positive way. But I, I would see that those two guys, knowing Sid as little bit that I did and, and knowing Jack, I would think that they would get along great. Mm-hmm. A good and, match. And what about Al Davis? Oh, man. Well, I don't know what kind of a connection they had with that. How, he was offensive coordinator. He, oh, was he the offensive? I know. Well, I'll bet the real offensive coordinator was Sid Gilman. I mean, that's the way it is nowadays. They name a guy's offensive coordinator, but a lot of times it's the head coach. It's the, and I would think that that was the case back in those days, too. I don't know how I got along with Al. I have no idea. But I would think that, I would think that any coach would have a great respect for Jack because of uh, how badly he wanted to play and how important it was for him and, and the work ethic that he had, but also a guy that would not be afraid to question you, uh, come up with new ideas on his own, uh, that type of thing, but I, I would think that most coaches would like Jack. But but maybe sometimes there'd be a little conflict because Jack was that kind of a guy, you know. Uh, Peyton, I coached Peyton Manning for his first four years. Peyton, you know, as good as there is, with a, with a fabulous work ethic, with a guy totally committed to being the best he could be. So I we we and I've known Peyton since he was a little kid because he grew up in New Orleans when I was with the Saints. But uh, we'd battle a little bit because he, he was an emotional guy like I was too. And I would think that Jack and his coaches would be kind of the same way, in a positive way. Now, when in 1965, before the Bills played the Chargers in a championship, AFL championship game, Gilman was quoted as saying, Jack Camp has all the maturity of a 10-year-old girl. Now, does that surprise you? No. Or, no. No, I mean, it does surprise me. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does surprise me. I have a 10-year-old girl. That's what, that's what, it's on paper. I mean, I, I, I can't vouch for it. I wasn't there, but. Yeah, that surprises me. Yeah. Okay. Jack was an emotional guy, you know, and, but he wasn't an immature guy. No, I'm not, no. That surprises me, yeah. That might be just Sid, you know, saying something. How did uh, how did Kemp take the fact that he um, got waived and ended up with the Bills for a hundred dollars? Well, I don't remember talking to him when that occurred, but I would guess that it would have bothered him because I think he had some good things going here in, in San Diego. I know he got to be good friends with was it Herb Klein who yeah. Uh, probably was starting to do some things outside of football here in San Diego. I would assume that. I kind of got that impression. So I would think that going from San Diego to Buffalo was not something he really was looking forward to, but he certainly took advantage of that opportunity and made the most of it. How did he avoid the the draft, the That's a good military question. draft? That's a good question. I do not know. Because uh, he was a reservist when there was a big call-up after the Berlin cr- uh, crisis. There was a Berlin crisis, and mm-hmm. in the, uh, but I don't know. That's a good question. I probably wondered that at some time. I I I joined the Marine Corps. I I went into an officer program when I was in college. Spent three years afterwards, but. I often, I, I sometimes wonder about that, how he didn't uh, have to go into service. But there, he wasn't the only one. Yeah, I don't know. How did, uh, how did football players, professional football players, avoid the draft in those days? I mean, they, they, you'd think that they'd be naturals for military service. I know. I, I still know. do, as a matter of fact. I don't know. Political no. influence? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. You don't think Baron Hilton would have used <laughs> used his influence to keep his quarterback or something like that? I don't think so, but it's possible, I guess. Uh, what do you know about his uh, relationship with Lou Saban? 
Well, I didn't know Lou. Uh, Lou was another uh, aggressive type coach. Speak his mind. Uh, emotional guy. I would think they might have, I would, I'm just assuming now that they might have clashed on some things knowing Jack, maybe similar type personalities, but probably great respect for one another. Did, did you and Jack communicate about his football career? Not as too it went much. On? Uh -huh. Not too much. Uh -uh. Did he ever talk to you about his rivalry with La Monica? No. Um, and what about, uh, what about, race i mean this is a this is the 50s uh or 60s and jack was jack at, at in buffalo actually integrated roommates and stuff like that did you know about that and yeah and, and that didn't surprise me that he would do something like that i mean I, I knew about it and i'm thinking hey that's i respect jack i admire jack for that but that it wasn't like, wow, I can't believe he's doing that. No, no way. I mean, I would be more like, yeah, that sounds like something Jack would do. Um, and what about the uh, the AFL Players Association? Did, did well, you... again, uh, again, Jack, Jack was always a leader, but I saw him more as a leader on the football field than, than off the football field. So... When he started doing things like this, it wasn't like a, a, a surprise to me because I knew, I was, I knew he was capable of, of the leadership qualities. But it wasn't like, wow, I can't believe Jack's head of the AFL Players Union. It was like, oh, good for Jack, you know. He's, he's taking charge of something. I mean, he, he, he always was that type of person. But like in college where he and I were the closest and spent the most time together other than on the football field I don't remember him like you asked me about things on campus you know or in the he, he didn't do that it was more just as a, as a football player where I saw his leadership but he was always a, an aggressive assertive let's get after it type guy you know so I mean you're you're a NFL coach. I mean, he won a lot of games. He was an MVP uh, several times in the AFL, um, but he's not a candidate for the Hall of Fame. So, what's the difference between a Hall of Fame quarterback and a and a Jack Kemp? Why wouldn't Jack Kemp be a Hall of Famer? Because he didn't do it in the National Football League. He did it in the American Football League, and I don't think that. I'm trying to think of how many AFL guys are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Do you think he was good enough? He certainly had the he certainly had the uh, the stats and the records to to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Some of that is political too, getting in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I mean, there's people that I think maybe deserve it, coaches and players that aren't in it, and maybe some that are in it that maybe don't have the or weren't, don't deserve it as much as somebody that's not in it. I think there's some some of that in as far as the Pro Football Hall of Fame is concerned, some. But Jack would be a, a definitely be a candidate, in my opinion. I, I don't know. I think it's the f fact that he did everything as an AFL player and never as an NFL player. Had he had the NF N AFL and NFL would have merged with, during Jack, say, the height of his career, and he would have gone into the NFL and done some of the stuff he did in the AFL, he'd probably be in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. But I think the fact that it was all done in the AFL, that's why he's not. Well, Jack, you know, and, and again, we were closest in college, but he wasn't the easiest guy to get along with because of his, I, I want to say, maybe aggressive personality or impatient personality. Uh, he could be, a, I mean, he wasn't the most cordial, uh, easygoing. He wasn't that. That's not Jack Kemp. What, what, what's the, what were the issues? I don't know. I don't remember the issues. You're not you know? moving fast enough or what? I don't know. Sometimes Jack had his own agenda about things, you know, and he was going to do his, his things his way and do what he wanted to do. And if he didn't do them, okay. But, but, but he was a good guy. Don't get me wrong. We were best friends and, and a good guy. Nothing bad. It just 
uh, his, his aggressive personality. Uh, just back to the uh, the uh, quarterback issue. I mean, do you think he was a great quarterback as a as a pro? What's great? Well, no, was he, he a Joe Montana or a Terry Bradshaw or a uh, Dan Fouts? Uh, I, I think it, I think it, as far as the American Football League, and I had a great amount of respect for the American Football League. I think it was better than people gave it credit for. He was great for them. Would he have been great? Say, say you take the Jack Kemp then and put him in the NFL today as a quarterback, would he be great? I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say yes or no. But he was, he was a great quarterback in the American Football League, yes. Uh, can you see anything that he took from sports into politics? Any characteristics, any... Yeah, I think I think I think his his the leadership qualities, the work ethic, the the study, the the um, intensity, um, leadership, all those things. I think d definitely were there was a great care. I could see the carryover from what I knew about him as a as a football player and as a politician. What part did you play in his political career? None. No, I had nothing to do with it. Did you, for him. did you, did you, you never campaigned for him or? No, mm -hmm. never campaigned for did him. Did you support him? Oh yeah, very much so. Do you think he would have been a good president? Yeah, I think he would have been a great president. I really believe that. Yep. I was disappointed that he never got that opportunity. Why do you think he would have been a good president? Just because of all the things we've talked about. I mean, all the, all the qualities that he possessed. Tough. He was tough. I think you got to be tough. He, he had strong beliefs in what he believed in. I mean, he wasn't wishy-washy. That's the last thing you'd say about Jack Kemp, you know, that he was wishy-washy. Hey, this is what, the way I think it should be, and he, and he committed himself to this, and, you know, I, and I think you got to be strong, got to be tough, got to be knowledgeable, got to believe in things, got to be a leader. Jack had all these qualities. All right. Well, thank you very much. I hope really it was okay. appreciate it, Coach. I mean, yes, it yeah. was great. Thank you. Okay.